Okay, boys and girls, I have another book about determination, and this one's called Nothing But Trouble, the story of Althea Gibson. And this is actually a biography. This is gonna give us real information about Althea Gibson. And just look at the front cover. What can you tell about her? Looks like she's pretty fast, okay? She's quite an athlete. Um, so we're gonna read to see um, think of, again about determination. What are you noticing in terms of this woman's determination? And look at this. You can see these are actually tennis balls. So that gives us a little bit of a clue about maybe what sport she plays. Nothing but trouble, the story of Althea Gibson. And as I read the first few pages, I want you to be noticing uh, the illustrations. Althea Gibson was the tallest, wildest tomboy in the history of Harlem. Everybody said so. Harlem is in New York City. And so she was the tallest, wildest tomboy. A tomboy is usually a girl who likes to do lots of things that boys do, like very athletic, okay? Although now boys and girls are I think at this time, there weren't a lot of girls that were very involved with sports. So she was a tomboy. She loved to play sports. Her mama said, just give that child a nickel for a loaf of bread and see what happens. Soon as she catches sight of those boys playing stickball, my bread is long forgotten. So her mother says, you know, just give her a nickel, send her off for bread, but if she sees the boys playing stickball, I think the bread becomes <laughs> a stickball, <laughs> or she doesn't, she doesn't go to get the bread. Her daddy said, that girl stays out so late playing basketball, she doesn't even come home some nights. Hmm. So she plays a lot of basketball. Her teacher said half the time she doesn't even return from recess. I'd see a lot more of Althea if I taught lessons on the playground. So she stays out for recess longer. And then the policeman said she's a, a fast runner all right, but you can't make a sport out of nicking sweet potatoes. That's against the law. Maybe she used to take some sweet potatoes from the market and run fast. Well, you can't do that. So remember when they said everyone said so, that she was the tallest, wildest tomboy in the history of Harlem? These are the people that are saying this. Her mother, her father, her teacher, the policeman. Okay. And look at these illustrations. Don't you notice that little bit of color around Althea? Hmm, I wonder why they do that. They all said, Althea Gibson, you're nothing but trouble. So see, they're not very happy with the way she's acting, but look at her smile. <laughs> Does she really care? Nope. Althea didn't care what they said. She knew she would be somebody someday, somebody big like Charlie Parker or Sugar Ray. In the meantime, just one thing to care about in this world, the game. So um, Charlie Parker was a famous jazz musician. He's right there. And Sugar Ray was a famous boxer. So they were very famous and she's saying, huh, I'm gonna be as famous as they are. Give her a stick, a paddle, a hoop, or a ball, and Althea Gibson was good to go. Look at that. And it's almost like all of that color, everybody, they want the spotlight on her, right? And I think her moves are so good. She's so good at what she does. That's why that illustrator puts that color in there. Buddy Walker was the play leader down on 143rd Street where Althea lived. A play leader, I think, is someone that would come down and help all of the kids get involved with games, okay? He would start some games. But at night, he was a musician in one of Harlem's society orchestras. So society orchestra would be a very, very 
posh, very, um, um, an orchestra is like where you go and you hear um, the violins and the flutes and it's, it's very proper. When Buddy watched Althea play paddle tennis, he didn't see nothing but trouble. No, sir, except maybe for the poor rubber ball. What he saw in Althea was pure possibility. So everybody else saw nothing but trouble because they thought she was not acting the way she should, right? She was playing all these sports. Most girls didn't do that then. But he didn't see that. He didn't see trouble. He saw pure possibility. That means a lot of potential. He saw what she could potentially do. She was that good. So times were hard. But Buddy scrounged up enough money to buy Althea a stringed tennis racket at a second-hand store. It didn't look like much next to the big wooden paddle Althea normally used for street tennis. So he went and he got some money, scrounged it up. He didn't have a lot, but he said, I want to get her a tennis racket and really see what she can do. After she practiced a little, Buddy asked a friend at the Harlem River tennis courts to play a few sets with her. As Althea covered the court, Buddy forgot all about the wild tom tomboy who roamed the streets of Harlem. What Buddy saw was music in the way she moved. So um, when it says she covered the court, she's on the tennis court and she moves all around the court to hit the ball in the right place and her moves are beautiful in fact he says he saw music in the way she moved she was fast she was accurate buddy wasn't the only one other players stopped their games to get a look at her they all stopped playing just to see how she was playing Althea saw the other players watching her it felt good it made her feel like she was somebody Althea, Buddy said after the game, trying to contain his excitement, this is Juan Sorrell, a friend of mine. We have an idea. Hmm. So she's, she's really what we call turning heads. Everybody stopped to see how she was playing. She's that good. Juan Sorrell belonged to the Cosmopolitan, the ritziest tennis club in Harlem. So ritzy means really fancy, okay? Kind of like the orchestra. You would dress up and go to the, um, th this is like a very special, special club. All the Sugar Hill Society people belonged there. So probably a lot of people with a lot of money. You play tennis here, buddy, told Althea. You can make something of yourself. After the members of the club saw what Althea could do, Buddy and Juan convinced a few of them to pay for lessons with the club's one-armed tennis pro. So the professional, the tennis pro, is going to give her some additional lessons and teach her the rules. Fred Johnson, oh, Fred tried to improve Althea's ways on and off the court. While Althea loved playing a new game on a big fancy court, she didn't like being told how to act. So he worked on, when she, it says he improved her ways on and off the court, what do you think they mean by that, on and off the court? Okay, she loved to play a new game on a big fancy court. She didn't like being told how to act. So he's telling her, on the court, these are the rules. But off the court, this is also how you have to act. Okay, and it's, it's kind of what we call etiquette. How, your manners, okay? And she is a little stubborn sometimes, and she doesn't like to follow those rules. We know that about her. So let's see what happens. Never said I wanted to be a fine lady, she complained to Buddy. Hmm. But see, she's going to have to be. Unfortunately for her, the members of the Cosmopolitan didn't like her wild ways either. They shook their heads and they whispered, nothing but trouble that one. Mrs. Rhoda Smith was a nice society lady who bought Althea her first tennis outfit so she'd look like all the other players on the court because they had to wear certain outfits. 
She made time to play regularly with Althea and to instruct her in the polite rules of the sport, right? Now Althea, when a loose ball rolls onto the court, you don't just bat it out of the way in any old direction. You send it back to the player it belongs to. That's how it's done in court tennis. Oh, Mrs. Smith, Althea muttered, can't we just play tennis? <sighs> See, she doesn't like all these little rules. Buddy tried to explain the importance of keeping cool. You've got to decide, Althea. Are you going to play your game or are you going to let the game play you? When I go to the jazz club, I play like a tiger, but I wear a tuxedo. So see, he's in a jazz band, and she sa he says, I play like a tiger. I play really strongly, but I wear a tuxedo, so I'm all fancy. Hmm. Althea said, throwing her, ar her tennis racket on the ground. I don't fit with these rich society folks. I'd rather punch somebody's lights out at, sh at Stillman's gym. But he said, Althea, I still believe, dot, dot, dot. He still believes in her. He knows that she has tons of potential and can go very far, even though she's, she's just a little bit um, annoyed by all of these rules. But the rules are in place for a reason. Take notice at this. Look at the color coming out of the saxophone. That's the instrument. So this is showing, the illustrator showing movement with color. He showed movement with color in all of the other pictures around Althea, right? So this is actually showing almost sound movement. On the other illustrations, it was showing movement movement, like action like here where she's playing tennis. A year later, Althea was in her re first real tennis tournament. She played well, but she lost in the finals to Na Nana Davis. After I beat her, Nana told the reporters, she headed straight to the grandstand without bothering to shake my hand. Some kid had been laughing at her and she was going to throw him out. I tell you, Althea Gibson is nothing but trouble. So Althea lost to this lady and normally you want to be a good sport and even if you lose you shake the person's hand who won. Instead she heard a little boy laughing at her and she was gonna go <laughs> throw him out of the game. Nothing but trouble, right? It took time, a good long time, but slowly Althea learned that wanting to slug her opponent as soon as she started losing her match made her a worse tennis player than if she kept her cool. Yeah. So even if you're starting to lose, we can't get angry and want to slug somebody. That means punch somebody. And her opponent is her, the person that she's playing against. With Buddy's help, Althea realized she could dress up in white and act like a lady and still beat the liver and lights out of the ball. So she could still dress fancy like they have to, but she could still be really strong and athletic and beat the liver and lights out of the ball. That means she's got a really strong, strong, um, she hits the ball really hard. Tennis changed Althea, all right. But just as importantly, and this is interesting, so this is the announcer down here, and this is different writing than this writing, and this is what he says. Ever since Miss Gibson rallied in the second set of the women's finals, she has proven to be nothing but trouble for seasoned U.S. and world champ Louise Bro. Now when he says nothing but trouble there, he's, is, is, it's different than when they've been saying nothing but trouble when she's really been in trouble, right? Now it's nothing but trouble for her opponent, okay? So in this women's finals, she has proven to be nothing but trouble. 
I think she's starting to win. Let's see what happens. Althea changed tennis. With that, Althea Gibson became the first African-American man or woman ever to compete in and win the coveted Wimbledon Cup, long considered the highest honor in tennis. And see, now he's saying it. She did it, ladies and gentlemen. She did it. Althea Gibson has won the championship here at Wimbledon Center Court. She won. She was the first African-American woman to win the Wimbledon, which is one of the biggest tennis tournaments in the world. It still happens now in the summer. Hopefully it'll happen this year. Um, and, um, and she won it. So she changed tennis. And she never did forget the man who first saw the champion of the world in the wildest tomboy in Harlem, right? He saw her potential. He knew how good she was, how good she was going to be. And so she wrote this. And again, it's kind of written in some fancy, fancy um, print. She says, tonight is the conclusion of a long and satisfying journey. It all started in one of New York's play streets when Buddy Walker, a play street supervisor, said, Althea, I believe you could become a good lawn tennis player. With these words, as handed as my first tennis racket, I, with these words, he handed me my first tennis racket. Tonight, I thank Buddy Walker for a most wonderful and satisfying victory. So when she won that trophy, she gave him a lot of the credit because he really saw in her this potential and gave her opportunities. So let's think about all of the things that you read about and we learned about Althea um, Gibson. Look at this that the author does at the very end. They give an author's note, um, and if you get this book, you can read it. Um, well, you know what? I'll read it to you. Althea Gibson was born in 1927 into a family of sharecroppers. In 1957, she became the greatest female tennis player in the world. Althea Gibson lived the American dream, but dreams aren't achieved alone. Though this is Althea's story, it is also Buddy Walker's story. When he reached out to a child who was not his own, by buying her a tennis racket, Buddy set in motion all of the wonderful things to come for Althea, who was always gracious about acknowledging the people who helped her turn her life around. I've made it, she wrote. It's half because I was, I was game to take a wicked amount of punishment along the way and half because there were an awful lot of people who cared enough to help me. So she acknowledges all the people that helped her. Buddy, Juan Sorrell, and Fred Johnson were the first of many influential people, including doctors, teachers, housewives, even boxing greats, Sugar Ray Robinson and Joe Lewis, who helped Althea achieve her dreams. Okay, But Althea would need even more supporters to help her fight her most insidious foe, racism. She has been called the Jackie Robinson of tennis because she was the, la the first black player, man or woman, to break the color barrier and compete and win at Wimbledon. Okay, The only way to reach a com competition like Wimbledon is to be invited. The all-white United States uh, Lawn Tennis Association effectively kept Althea out by not inviting her to tournaments. Their reason? She didn't have enough experience, but how can we get experience if she couldn't play? So she ended up, she played. And you know what I was reading also? She also joined, which I think she was the first African American to um, be a part of the LPGA, which is the Ladies Professional Golf Association. And what this author does is she took tennis balls and made almost like a little timeline of things that happened. Like 1927, that's when she was born, um, and it goes to 1930, her, her family moved to Harlem, and it keeps going through all of the different important things that happened in her life. 
and I think she passed away in 2003, I believe. Okay. So right now, with when you're at, now that you're at home, I want you to think about some adjectives. How would you describe Althea Gibson? What are some adjectives that we could that we could describe use to describe her? And what you can do is write them down. So you could write athletic. You could write determined. She was fast. Uh, what were some other ones? Oh, she was strong. Sometimes she was a little stubborn, right? <laughs> and what you can do is write these adjectives down and then talk about places in the story where you saw this adjective, like where you saw her being athletic. So we knew she played tennis. We know she played tennis, basketball, stickball, okay, etc. And then you could say where she'd be, where you saw her be determined, where you saw her fast. You could write those things after. You could make a little table like this, okay? And then put where you saw her do that, okay? All right, well, I hope you enjoyed reading this biography or listening to this biography. She was quite um, an important person. And um, again, it was because of her determination that she achieved what she did.